uh, and the second part, uh, her name was Maria Margarita Stella Olado Odado Heimberger at the Albert. <laughs> Pardon me? I think I left out a couple of <laughs> Maria Margarita, Maria Margarita Estela Bolado O'Donnell Letterer Heimberger E. Albert. She was married for 11 seconds to the actor Francis Letterer before she met my dad. Yes, she, her stage name was Margaret. And, oh, you saw what is it? Well, it's okay, I'll take it. <laughs> still dates heavily, you know. <laughs> His nickname is Buzz, and I know how he is. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, uh, she, it was interesting growing up. She had a very magical quality about it. And with, I, as a young kid, I saw the difference in the way that people came up to them. Uh, they'd come up to my dad and immediately start pat, you know, slapping him on the back, saying, "Hey, Ed, how you doing? Oh, I, it was great, you know, Very familiar and very sort of, you know, hail fellow, well met. And when they recognized my mom, there'd usually be a sharp intake of breath and three steps backward, and then they'd just stand there. They wouldn't talk to her, wouldn't come up to her. They'd just watch her. And she apparently had a very extraordinary effect on people, and she did. Very few films. She only did four or five films. One of them was the original Lost Horizon with Ronald Coleman. And she played the woman in Shangri-La who left Shangri-La for love. Uh, and a, a side note, a technical note in terms of film buffs, is that when she leaves Shangri-La, she does an age, there's an aging thing that happens. And that was the first time that had ever been done. Uh, they shot it mostly in an ice house in Pasadena. Uh, but a wonderful, extraordinary film that apparently touched people's spirit in a very profound and resonant way at the time. Um, like the times like now were very desperate times and very difficult, complex times. And that movie seemed to give people, even though it was sheer fantasy, uh, some hope and some faith that uh, they weren't finding in their everyday life. Uh, she was also the cat people. Uh, and Return of the Cat People, I think it was. That was a sort of an interesting kind of, for the sci-fi buffs here. There may be one or two. <laughs> and she did, as he said, Winter's Head, uh, a play, uh, Crime Without Passion. But she, for a, a very small amount of work, at least in, in, in film, she had an extraordinary effect. Thank you for the question. Yeah. Um, last year, um, can you relate the story or some of the conversation that went home when you went back home to your wife with part of your pants and your back out of <laughs> What did you tell <laughs> All I kept saying was pediatric AIDS. <laughs> Don't get any ideas this way. Well, that it's a very interesting situation, and one of the things that, that was really a kind of a watershed thing for me in terms of, of feeling that not so much that I owe you guys, but that I want to give back, was the extraordinary response when um, Paulette sort of let it be known that you know, some letters would really be helpful if, if you guys were interested in seeing me on the show. One of the things that, that uh, people don't realize is the incredible power of a few letters. Uh, you can literally, with 500 letters, change the course of a, of a show. A storyline, I mean, a thousand letters can keep a show on the air sometimes. And a thousand. Sometimes. 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 <laughs> Um, but a thousand letters is not that many letters, and they, they, they do read them, and they do take them seriously, and they are all counted. Um, there's far more power in you guys than, than I think you realize. 
this, what the situation is, it's still not sort of kind of lost hope at this point. Um, but the, aside from the letters that you guys wrote, apparently there was a very, very, very strong and for me very gratifying response to the work that I did on the show. Um, and they had started working on plans to bring me back, and I was supposed to do the season opener this year. There was some complications within the production itself that made it, at least at this point, not really that feasible. But Beth Sullivan, who's the producer, and definitely the mama of the show, said, listen, because it was political. It was an internal political thing that started getting very complicated, regrettably, because I love the show. And boy, I had some great ideas. I'll just tell you one quick idea. Um, she, Beth had said, because she knows that I write, you know, she said, put some ideas down for, for the character and for some episodes. And I wrote a, a piece one time. It's actually a story that I play guitar to, called A Sailor's Grave on the Prairie. Um, well, I might do it for you, so I won't tell it to you in a nutshell. But essentially, what I wanted to do is, he comes from Boston, in Boston Harbor, upper class, yachting and all that stuff. So I thought, I was trying to think of a good entrance, you know. So I was thinking, you know, the prairie being a sea of grass and the, the Conestoga wagons being the, the prairie schooners and that, you know, to have him on his own with a team of horses or whatever and on a Conestoga working his way to uh, Colorado Springs or wherever it's uh, supposed to be based. Um, and that either through an Indian raid or uh, thirst the horses die. And he's left with his wagon. And he's um, sitting there, and then you cut to uh, maybe Sully and a few Indians sitting you know, a couple of ridges over. And the, the, the lookout comes down and says, in appropriate you know, Indian stuff, says, You guys got to see this. I don't know what the hell it is. <laughs> and my idea was that his entrance was essentially they come up and they see this apparition coming through the heat waves and the haze across the the prairie. And what he's done is taken the canvas and the tongue of the wagon and made a sail. And he's coming at, you know, 30 miles an hour across the prairie. <laughs> um, but like I said, that'll, that'll, we'll, that'll show up someday, but not in, not in medicine woman, I don't think. But what happened was, was that Beth, who is a friend now, and uh, uh, she said, listen, instead of getting involved in all this stuff, let's do our own show. So that's what we're, we're working on. It's, it's still a It's still a very, very, very early stage. And just in principle, I never talk about projects that are upcoming if I can help it. Because more times than not, for whatever reasons, they don't happen. Um, and I always feel bad about, you know, saying, oh, well, we're going to do this, and then next year, you know, well, how's it going? Well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know. It's not happening. So I don't really talk about stuff that much, and I won't go into details on that. But except to say that if indeed we are blessed enough to bring it off, that it would be the fulfillment, not in terms of the series, but in terms of the story and what the setup is, of not only a, a lifelong dream of mine, but a lifelong dream. So keep your fingers crossed. Awesome. I said, willing to look like a complete. 